Hey everybody, welcome to Signal 65 Video Insight. I'm Ryan Shrout, I'm the president at Signal 65, and I'm joined by Blake Geyser from Samsung. He's the director of smartphone product management, uh, which, Blake, I'm gonna have you kind of explain to the audience what that is and kind of what your role entails uh, before we kick off our, our discussion today. No, I really appreciate the time here, Ryan, and the uh, ability to, to talk to uh, your viewers here. So, you know, as you said, I'm, I'm the director of product management for smartphones uh, for Samsung Electronics America. And, you know, what does that mean? Um, that means a whole lot of things. So, you know, we start uh, our work about 24 months before we launch a smartphone. Um, we connect with HQ in Korea uh, to provide them insights, trends that we're seeing uh, to help them to kind of decide what uh, technologies will be available and, and to prioritize those technologies with each other. And as we get closer to a launch, you know, my team is really focused on our, you know, company-wide go-to-market strategy, how we're going to take this product to market, the colors where, you know, we're going to um, provide these devices to be available through different channels, whether that be our carrier channels or our national retail or our .com channels, um, everything from, you know, pricings and promotions um, all the way through launch. Then, you know, after launch, we kind of go back and, and provide, you know, those postmortem feedbacks to uh, HQ. We identify if, if we see, you know, any um, problems out there with, with the product that we can jump on quickly to make any, you know, quick changes. Uh, and then, you know, between one launch to another, it's constantly tying ourselves into our customers, understanding exactly what they want, what they need from their devices, and, you know, bringing that to HQ and, and trying to make the best positive impact we can with our customers. That, that's a pretty, it's a pretty broad scope you've got there. And I, and I imagine it's even maybe more complex in recent kind of years, quarters, however you want to measure it as these kind of AI features have come, come on board. Uh, and the kind of the rate of change, at least from my perspective, seems quicker than it has been a few years ago. Uh, you know, just the, the last year alone with the S24 um, lineup that we introduced with Galaxy AI, it's been just a complete rocket ship of, you know, the voices out there, what people like, you know, what they want to see. You know, we, we went from zero to 100 really quick. Uh, we weren't entirely sure, you know, launching the first mobile uh, AI uh, smartphone out there on the market. Um, but it's, it's just been a, a phenomenal ride and, and something really fun to, to work on. Yeah. So the, the spark of this conversation is a report that Signal 65 did looking at Galaxy AI. We actually compared um, the Galaxy S24 Ultra to a competing phone across some AI benchmarks and workloads and, and user experiences. What I wanted to start the conversation with here is to get your perspective and Samsung's perspective about the overall vision for Galaxy AI, right? Which is not just a smartphone specific um, feature set, right? But kind of how it spans across different devices, um, and and like how's what does that vision look like from a from your perspective and and kind of products today versus you know what that vision may be twelve months from now. You know, the, the overarching goal that we have right now is to create, you know, intuitive, easy to use and impactful tools uh, with our smartphones. And we really kind of break that down in the mobile space uh, into four or five different categories. Uh, and those fall into, you know, communication tools, productivity tools, creativity and health. And so, you know, what our goal is, is really to take all of these different tools, you know, find the best partners to continue to grow our ecosystem and to combine them in an easy, intuitive UI where oftentimes our customers don't know that they're using AI, but they're just having a phenomenal experience about it. If you have to dive deep and deep and deep uh, for people to kind of realize that, you know, those different features you have out there, it really gets kind of lost within the phone. So how can we bring these to the forefront? How can we make them impactful and useful to our customers? And then how can we really bring it across our ecosystem of mobile devices from tablets and watches, PCs? Um, and what you're also seeing now more and more is actually some, you know, really fun cross collaborations with uh, our other teams here at SEA within the TV di division and the digital appliances. We really have this like wide net that we're pulling out there 
And, you know, frankly, the smartphone is kind of the cornerstone of that. It's, it's the brainchild linking everything together. I, I was at the uh, IFA press conference that Samsung held, and it was interesting to see how the AI vision did exactly as you explained, like it spanned across washing machines to refrigerators to smartphones to, to PCs. And there's really not many, if any other companies that kind of have that that scale and that breadth of feature set uh, and product lines to go to go drive it. So it's I, I think the, the Galaxy AI implementations that I've seen and have been utilized at this point have been have been really impressive um, across multiple different product lines. Um, well, you know, oh, to, to your point, um, what I, I don't have the official stats on me, but a majority of U.S. households have a, some kind of Galaxy product in their house. Um, you know, think just TVs, for example, as you know, the pre number one premium manufacturer out there in, in the U.S. And so, you know, Samsung isn't a, isn't a new name for people. And the more that we kind of pull them together and show them the value of that ecosystem and, and just the efficiencies and, and frankly, coolness that you can do among those different devices uh, is really something that kind of sets us apart from a lot of the competition out there. I want to pull us back to smartphones. I'm I'm a hardware geek, tech nerd at heart, um, and I'm curious when you're when you're designing uh, uh, hardware with Galaxy AI in mind. This could be when you're selecting and building out the the SoC and or the phone itself. You know, how do you consider different aspects like performance and power efficiency and their and their value uh, in in the Galaxy AI fold? Well, absolutely, and and. Frankly speaking, you know, it is the antithesis of, of the value of, of a smartphone to begin with. Um, and power and performance, uh, excuse me, performance and power efficiencies go hand in hand. I mean, the right hardware with Galaxy Eye actually enable both um, increased power uh, efficiency and performance. Obviously, you're going to need some high performing hardware uh, as the foundation for that performance. But when you tie that in with Galaxy AI integrations, we can really help level up that performance in multiple different ways, but we can also increase power efficiency, you know, by intelligently using power only where and when it's needed. So it's it's a really unique dynamic where we're getting to a point where you think you can't become more powerful, have higher performance and, you know, the efficiencies uh, with that. But Galaxy AI is really uh, unique in that it's able to kind of tie those things together and put power where it needs to be, um, put uh, performance uh, when you when you need performance, and more importantly, drop it when you don't need it. So to extend you know, the battery that you have uh, to give you much more than a, a day of power on, on that smartphone. Yeah, it's great. In, in the report that Signal 65 published uh, looking at uh, the S24 Ultra, um, you know, we looked at, it, we saw and measured amazing local AI inference performance. Um, but I think we both know that AI is not just about what's happening in the cloud. It's not just about what's happening local on your device. Both are pretty important. But I'm curious from a Samsung perspective, you know, how do you, you know, balance that, um, the, the value of, of local versus cloud compute, the privacy side, performance side, what, what are the kind of the key aspects you think of? You know, that's another balancing act that we look at. Uh, having a strong NPU is extremely important when it comes to AI. Um, but what we're also seeing is that uh, where we can maximize uh, the experience with on-device AI, that's really the, the number one priority. You know, it gives you maximum speed, maximum security, um, as well as being able to utilize it when you don't have a network on hand. And so, you know, the better uh, we get at that, you know, the more powerful MPU chips that become available, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be looking at those so we can maximize that ecosystem of on-device computing. But cloud really brings value in its own, within its own right, you know, to be able to do those heavier tasks. Um, so that way we're able to extend the features and benefits on the device that we simply can't do, you know, at this current moment. Yeah, and I think I think Samsung has a, a, a awesome opportunity balancing the, those two different kind of local compute and cloud compute pools of resources. Because um, I think most users will see more of this AI benefit as it becomes more personal, as it knows more about you. And that's where you can get into the security side and the privacy side and local compute. 
Um, but when you get into the more kind of creative, high compute boundedness of uh, you know image generation or things like that, um, you know having access to both I think can be super important. Um, it, it actually reminds me the the one of the features we test in the report is just about object removal, right? And I think to the vast majority of consumers that use these features, they still kind of seem like magic. Uh, and you brought up earlier in the conversation that in some ways you, you do want the users to not even know that they're using AI when they use a feature. They just see some, some impressive outcome from it. And uh, you know, they shouldn't have to think about what, what magic is happening in the background to, to, to make it all come together. But I'm curious, does it, has anything surprised you or Samsung uh, about how quickly this adoption has occurred? Um, any specific features that that are are just universally loved and adopted and quickly iterated on uh, from your perspective? You, you know, I can't say that we're so much surprised at Samsung. You know, a lot goes into these, and and so we're using them. You know, six nine months out, testing them, driving them, um, and falling in love with them. Um, but I can tell you that my team and I, you know, and Samsung, you know, we're extremely, uh, satisfied that our, that our customers are actually using these features. Um, and to that point, they're using them over and over again. So we always talk, you know, kind of, uh, with various, uh, you know, phone features and, and software out there, you can have kind of the party trick softwares uh where you know you're like hey look at this it's really cool uh at a party and then never talk about it again and then you have you know these more impactful features that people come back to and, and keep utilizing um and you know frankly what we've seen is that there's an extremely high adoption rate with galaxy ai not only are people using it they're using it over and over again and really you know some of the things that have really made an impact within galaxy ai are a lot of our trans translation services uh, and features that we have on the device. So, you know, being able to have a real time translated conversation on the phone um, and that's, you know, all of our translation services are on device AI. So you don't have to worry about what's happening with that conversation, being able to put a phone out there and, and have a real time face to face conversation in real time translations. You know, we've seen that you know that product alone has one of the highest use cases for those customers that you know need to utilize those translation services um and you know in the us it's probably not a surprise that spanish to english is the number one translated uh language out there with second being english to um spanish but mm -hmm. what's really really unique and kind of awesome about it is that especially in you know the diverse culture that we live in there's multi-generation families where a grandson might not be able to communicate with a grandmother and we're seeing and getting feedback of people saying you know my eight-year-old talked to his grandmother without my help for the first time and that's just that's kind of cool. those really cool use cases that we didn't even piece together to begin with um you know and then you know from a productivity side uh, Samsung Notes is one of our highest used apps uh, that we've had for quite a long time, especially when you're talking about, you know, the Fold series or, or, or Ultra series. And, you know, being able to do things like record and transcribed meetings, turn it into, you know, an AI summary. And then what's helpful for me, especially since I work so much with Korea, is just being able to translate that and send it off and, and know that it's, you know, saying what I need it to say. And, you know, one of the other kind of really cool things that we see is that, uh, especially as Gen Z, you know, continues to get more and more into this market, um, we're seeing a lot more post-processing edits on, you know, people's pictures and videos. Um, and so, you know, being able to do things like object erase, um, but, you know, we actually introduced things like sketch to image uh, with our Flip and Fold 6 series uh, and we added it to our latest uh, One UI 6.1.1 MR, you know, to the S24 family uh, and even S23 uh, family. And so that's where you can just take a picture. You love the picture. It's just not perfect for you. Uh, or you want to make it fun. Say you're out, you know, in a field with some friends and you want to sketch a, 
UFO into that picture. And true to life, it looks like you're, you know, standing right there being the first to welcome uh, your friends from another planet. It's these are they're, they're all great features. I, I I really have enjoyed using them uh, on the S twenty four Ultra that I've that I use here too. Um, I, I want to ask a question about form factor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think AI is fundam- It's going to if it hasn't already just kind of fundamentally change how we interact with these devices. Do you foresee anything changing around the physical design or use cases for smartphones or any other kind of mobile devices because of these changes that are taking place? I absolutely do. And what I would say is like, we're just scratching the surface at this point in time. But, you know, I I believe over time, we'll continue to see more and more kind of form factor changes in in very unique um, uh, AI features that that we'll bring to the table. Uh, But we've already, you know, at Samsung started on that. We started on that six years ago when we introduced, you know, the first foldable smartphone to the market. Um, and, you know, the unique qualities of, of having a foldable smartphone uh, is you have two screens on one device. So how can we look at that and utilize those multiple screens uh, to, you know, create some unique use cases for Galaxy AI? And, you know, we've done that with a number of different things. Um, you know, probably the most used one is our translation services, where you can just plop your phone down on a table fold it halfway up and have a two-way conversation with somebody in a different language and immediately translating for them where they can look at it and you can see their responses. And, you know, you can really have much more of a face-to-face conversation. Um, But, you know, there's so much more that's going to come from that physical design. But really what's also, you know, I think underrated or maybe undervalued uh, is the fact that as we're bringing more AI into the ecosystem aspect, there's a lot that can happen there. You know, the biggest one that we're seeing right now are our health uh, features that we have, where you can have a Galaxy Watch, you can have the Galaxy Ring tied into your phone. Now you have multiple touch points on your body to collect, uh, you know, data necessary, and then, you know, pull it all into the Galaxy phone to do the heavy lifting of AI in the background to give you much more accurate, health testings from, you know, your heart rate to blood oxygen levels to, um, you know, you name it, uh, really kind of being able to pull it together. So what we see is that, you know, the, the changes in form and function, you know, will exist and extend outside of the physical phone itself. It's that's the, those are the types of things that I think many of us can't even picture and perceive what what all will will shift. Uh, I think you probably have a pretty unique perspective on it. I don't expect you to tell me what Samsung's going to launch in 24 36 months from now. Uh, but after the after the call if you feel like you want to you want to share feel feel free. Um, Blake, it, it was great having you on today. I think this is uh, a, a great conversation. I think something that we'll probably want to do again pretty soon. The, um, the the innovation, the rate of change for Galaxy AI, AI in general, but Galaxy AI especially has been has been pretty astounding. So thank you for joining me on this. I really really do appreciate it. I really enjoyed myself and look forward to seeing and talking with you and your viewers uh, as soon as we can. Got it. Uh, For everybody, um, you can check out this report. You can find it on Signal65.com, where we go through and analyze the performance and capabilities and competitive analysis of uh, Galaxy AI. I'm Ryan Shrout for Signal65, and we'll see you next time.